Lift up your voice in song to the mighty one. Lift up your hands in praise. Fall on your knees at the throne of the Holy One. Offer yourself to the Ancient of Days. He is the light that shines in the darkness. He is the rock that stands. Glory and honor and power be unto the Lamb. Lift up your voice in see one lift up your hands in praise fall on your knees at the throne of the holy one offer yourself to the ancient of days Jesus Christ is Lord Jesus is the only way to the father Jesus baptizes us in the holy spirit Praise you, Father, Jesus, and Holy Spirit. This is Daily Bread. I'm Father Al Lauer, and we're so happy to share the Word of God with you. We're going to continue a series on forming branches of presentation ministries. Whether that is of any interest to you whatsoever, we're going to share the Word of God. God is going to come in power. People are going to give their lives to Jesus. There's going to be people healed. There's going to be people set free. There's going to be people forgive. People who were enemies will be reconciled. God will do that and say, we're not even talking about all that. God is always talking about all that. And when we just proclaim the Word of God, well, who knows what He might do. We just want to start off blessing everyone. This water reminds us we're baptized. We've been baptized into Christ into his death, into his resurrection. We are children of God, actual sons and daughters of God, heirs of the kingdom of heaven. We've got a new nature. Oh, we, we just got it great, don't we? Let's pray. Father, we pray in the name of your son, Jesus. We ask you to confirm this word with signs and wonders and healings. We pray, Lord, that people will stand up for you. We pray that people will move on for you. We pray that people will come on strong for you. We pray that people will quit a life of lukewarmness, a life of paralysis, a life of just refusing to to move in the power of your Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. We're talking about forming a branch, not only of presentation ministries, but of one of the major ministries of presentation, and that is a branch of Our Lady of Guadalupe Bible College. This Bible College is the only Catholic Bible College at, at this time. Hopefully, by the time you get this tape, there'll be thousands of other ones, but at least at this time, the only Catholic Bible College in the country. And then even more so, the only Bible college or even, I guess you'd say, college period that will reach the average lay person fitting into that person's schedule, fitting into that person's family responsibilities and financial constraints. And this is the, the only uh, college that we know of that actually reaches out to everybody. It's not uh, kind of like, well, if you can move to this town for a few few years and just, I don't know what you're going to do with your family and with your job, and but uh, if you can do that, come on. If you got some money, well, come on. Well, see, we've got it set up that you don't have to do that. And it's so important that it would be set up that way. Otherwise, the uh, more advanced understanding of the Bible is only for, I guess, what you would call a, a select few. Not, and the church becomes a professionally elite, uh, managed, and led group. Hey, that's uh, that's not the way God did it. When Jesus came, he didn't he didn't go and, and and pick the rabbis to lead the church. Now, nothing wrong with rabbis. Nothing wrong with a professional elite. I'm part of a professional elite. We need that. 
But if those are the only people leading the church, I think we're in big trouble. We're certainly far away from the way Jesus originated the thing. Remember, Jesus didn't just include fishermen and farmers and simple people in his um, work. He raised them up to lead. I think this is so critical. I'm going to share a scripture with you. This is from Acts of the Apostles and chapter 4. It says in verse 13, Observing the self-assurance of Peter and John and realizing that the speakers were uneducated men of no standing. Uneducated men of no standing. The questioners were amazed. Jesus chose a few professionally elite people, but mostly uneducated men of no standing. That didn't mean they didn't need any education. But it meant they started with nothing. How can you reach those kind of people? You can't tell them to change uh, to a different city or to drop their family or their jobs. No, no. You've got to make it very, very practical, flexible, economical. And that's what Guadalupe Bible College is. You, you have to come to Cincinnati at least once a year. Now, that's, that's a challenge for some people. but. You know, once a year is not just impossible. It's not like coming for months and months and months. Uh, you can do most of it, not all of it, but 90% of it, of the college by home study. Um, it, you, you can, uh, we, we uh, need money to do these things, but whether you have a cent, you can still graduate from this college, which is, which is equivalent to a two-year college. Uh, we will send you an, a little envelope saying, make an offering. You can put nothing in that envelope and you'll still graduate. And, and so money's not the issue. And uh, really, uh, time uh, is not the issue, at least insofar as uh, if you, you know, you don't have to um, leave your family or anything like that. If you are willing to make the sacrifices and God's called you to do this, well, you can. So anybody can get a more advanced biblical education and be equipped for ministry, as it says in Ephesians 4, 11, to make disciples of all nations and to become a disciple in the fullest sense of the word, Matthew 28, 19. And we're equipping people not to do churchy things. When you graduate from this two-year college, of course, most people do it part-time, so it makes it a four-year, five-year, six-year college, depending on how much time you have. When you graduate from this, um, do you go and end up being a pastor to some church? Do you end up being a DRE? Well, some of the people are. Some of the people are, are that even before they begin the college. But um, no, we're, we're mostly trying to train people for um, uh, ministry in the secular world because that's where most people are. That's where, that's where we've got to let Matthew 5 and verse uh, 13, 14, we got to be the salt of the earth. We got to let our light shine. We got to be a leaven of renewal. That's where most people are. That's your major ministry in addition to your family. If somebody asks you your major ministry, most of you would say, my major ministry is marriage and family, discipling my children and making my spouse holy. Well, then you say, what's your second major ministry? Well, then you'd say, my, well, it would be being, a, being salt and light in the secular workplace, evangelizing, discipling. Uh, just letting Jesus shine through me there. That would be right. That would be your, your major ministry. And, you know, what you do at your church is real important, but it's only a small thing. What you're doing 40 hours a week, that's what is really a major thing. So um, we try to train people for that. Because, you know, I think when I say this, let your light shine, be the salt of the earth. Go out there to AT&T or IT&T or... Go out there to this hardware store, or go out there to this, this um, TV station, or go out there to this school, and you just let your light shine. And you say, 
what, what do you mean? <laughs> they were evangelized, lead people to Christ, uh, disciple them, help them grow in the Lord, and draw them together in Christian community, and just Christianize your, your part of society. As it says in the Catechism, permeate that society with the gospel. And you say, what? <laughs> what do you do? How can you do that? I don't think you understand where I work. How could I do that? That's a very good question. You need to be equipped for that secular ministry. Well, that's what Guadalupe Bible College provides. Now, to form a branch of Guadalupe Bible College, if you've already got various tools of presentation ministries working in your area, maybe you distribute one bread, one body to uh, all told in your diocese, a thousand people, two thousand people receive it, for example. Maybe you have a Bible telephone line in your diocese from presentation ministries. Maybe you're distributing uh, various tapes or maybe you're having an annual conference maybe on Christian community or on Bible teaching. Maybe you have a, a series of Bible uh, teachings that are going on and you're teaching the, the teachers. Uh, so you're getting various components of renewal and tools of presentation ministries. Well, brothers and sisters, the way to bring these all together, the way to integrate them so that they all can benefit from one another, the way to really help people in these ministries grow to the fullest is a Bible college branch. Because with a Bible college branch, you can kind of uh, connect some things there with the radio. You can connect some things with the Bible telephone. You can get some of the people who read One Bread, One Body to uh, be going to the college. You can supplement their college work with One Bread, One Body. Um, you, you know, it, things will just work out a lot better if you can put it all together. It's, it's a great integrator, unifier. And uh, even though those sound like big words and abstractions, that means people grow and they grow faster, and that means we are able to uh, uh, bear greater, greater yield for the kingdom of God. So how do you form a branch of the Bible college? First thing, obviously, you pray, 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 pray. But then learn as much about the Bible college as you possibly can. I would say this particular book called Our Lady of Guadalupe Bible College, just general information, little handbook, really know that well. And know some of the scriptures here and know the, um, uh, the uh, papal uh, documents referred to and the ins and outs. Know just all kinds of little facts about it. Like somebody says, well, how long does it take to do the Bible college? We'll say it's equivalent to a two-year college. But uh, if you do it part-time, well, there's a plan for three years, four, there's a plan for two years, three years, four years, five years, six years, and seven years. And you can even do adaptations of that plan, um, of those plans. If somebody said, well, how many people are in the Bible college? Well, at this point, I would say 60. How old is the Bible college? At this point, we'd say uh, getting to the end of two years. Now, of course, some of you will be hear, hearing this years into the future, so it'll change. Um, if somebody said, uh, well, what's the point of the Bible college? To be able to say, uh, the Catechism, Section 5, we need to know our faith organically, systematically, and comprehensively. That's referred to in the Catechism, Section 5. Organic means we, sh we know how the parts interrelate. It's organized. And systematic means we have it in a proper order. You know, a lot of people, they, Catholics are just totally lost about certain aspects of, of, uh, of Revelation because they don't have the bases for understanding these things. You ask a Catholic about the Immaculate Conception. You ask a Catholic about purgatory. You ask a Catholic about indulgences. In order to answer some of those questions, you need to know several other things. For example, purgatory. To answer questions about purgatory, you have to know what is the nature of a church. You have to know about the justice of God. You have to know about the forgiveness of sin. You have to know about such things as reparation. Uh, you have to know about Christian community. You have to know about the power of prayer. You have to know about the unity of the body of Christ. 
you know, if you don't have all those prerequisites, somebody talking to you about purgatory, you say, I don't know, I, that's what I was brought up with. Well, that's good that you were brought up with it, but what, what's the point of this? What does this mean? See, that shows a lack of, of a systematic understanding. And so most Catholics are not very systematic. They, they just picked up different things. You know, they went to this prayer group, they heard something. They went to this conference, they heard something. They read this book, they heard something. They turned in this thing on the radio and they heard something. They, uh, they read this thing in a magazine. You know, uh, but it's just, it's just all kind of jumbled together. It's not in an orderly way. What if you did mathematics in a non-systematic way? You might be doing, taking calculus before you did multiplication or division. Wouldn't that be a mess? You would probably think calculus was stupid or you were stupid. But neither one was true. It was just not done in a proper order. It was not done systematically. So many Catholics think, oh, the Catholic Church teaches this. It ain't even in the Bible and it's all crazy. It's in the Bible and it's not crazy, but you don't have a systematic understanding. And so you don't have an understanding. Well, organic, systematic, and then comprehensive. You don't have all the parts. Not that you know everything, but you at least know uh, the main elements of divine revelation. Until you got all the parts, you sure can't put them, put them together. You, know, you try to put a puzzle together without all the parts, it's going to be hard. And see, since these things are all interrelated, hmm, you know, you got to have them all, or you got some problems. So that's the... Uh, the uh, goal of the college, uh, the, um, I guess you'd say, uh, uniqueness of the college. I'm going to mention this. This is from Lay Members of Christ Faithful People, a document from the Pope, section 63. And he says, Formation is not the privilege of a few, but a right and a duty of all. In this regard, the Synod Fathers have said, possibilities of formation should be proposed to all, especially the poor, who can also be a source of formation for all. So the uniqueness of Guadalupe Bible College, the special calling, we give advanced formation to all, including the poor, and you can't do that if you're accredited, because you have to spend a lot of money to be accredited, and that means people who don't have money can't get in, at least not many of them, maybe a few can be in by scholarship, but not many of them. And then if you are, um, even if you're not accredited, you got to have a bunch of people who are going to lay down their lives and work for years to reach the people that aren't being reached to raise up new leaders for the church and a new kind of leader, really the new kind of leader that was the old kind of leader that Jesus started out with, at least in part. And then, of course, you'd have to have home study as a major component of the college but not as the total way of doing it because a biblical principle is you need to learn the context of community. But a biblical principle is you need to uh, reach out to everybody and don't exclude the poor. So putting all those principles together uh, is how we work the college. Okay, so I just gave you a few examples. Learn as much as you can about the college and then learn how to present it simply, clearly, and enthusiastically. I've given you a few little tips on how to do that. I would encourage you to be sure to quote some of the Bible passages. Quote Matthew 28, 19, make disciples of all nations. I would encourage you to quote that Acts 4 about Jesus choosing leaders who were uneducated, just simple people. Uh, and then I would encourage quoting at least a little bit from the Pope, like I just quoted one about formation open to all, especially to the poor. This is all, these things are all in this doc, in this this uh, general information handbook. Uh, but uh, make it simple. And then, then you can maybe give some personal testimony type thing, you know, just something real simple like um, uh, I, I was involved in the college or I'm a home study teacher and these are some of the things that some of our students said. If you get the My People Christian newspaper that presentation uh, publishes, there's a little section there on the Bible College. One little article, real little article each month. And sometimes there'll be letters in there. 
and uh, or just different words from some of the students or different things about the college. You'll find some real simple ways of presenting the Bible college to people. So you know as much as you can, then you learn how to present it simply, clearly, enthusiastically, and then you start referring potential students. You know, somebody says, hey, I'm interested. We'll say, well then, you call this number, or you write this address. Now, so several people begin the Bible college in your area. Now, the next step would be to raise up a home study teacher to work with the students. Now, they can mail their assignments into Cincinnati and, or to other parts of the country where we have home study teachers, and then they can have their assignments commented on and send back to them and have a good relationship and a good learning relationship with a home study teacher. But if they had a home study teacher who was close by, that they could probably meet with that person in addition to sending things back and forth. And so to have a home study teacher in your area or several home study teachers, we have seminars occasionally on how to be a home study teacher and uh, come to, coming to that would really get you started. You need to know the Bible. You don't have to be a whiz in knowing the Bible, but you need to know it to some degree and you need to know how to find things. One of the things about being a home study teacher is you don't have to like think on your feet that, that well. You know, if, you, if something's brought up, you can, you know, here you get it in the mail. You think, you know, you can look it up, you can take your time, you can talk to people, you can call me, call the Bible college, and, uh, you know, you're not, uh, like, obligated to come up with an answer real quick or anything like that. So if you know how to find things out and you have a, a pretty good understanding of the Bible and you can work with people one-on-one, -on -one, then you just need some, some training. Now, it's possible to become a home study teacher outside the Cincinnati area without coming to a seminar just by me giving you one assignment from someone, you uh, making comments, I giving you some samples on how I comment or other people comment just to give you an idea, and then you send it back to me, and then I comment on your comments, and I refer to your com. I forward your comments to the people that uh, did the assignment. But, you know, it's kind of a laborious process to do it that way, but it can be done. Um, so you raise up a home study teacher, and then, uh, you know, of course, you got to have a few students. Now, these home study teachers could take students from all around the country, all around the world, but it would be ideal for them to take some students closer to where they are, and that way they maybe could uh, have more of a personal face-to-face uh, -face uh, sharing at least on some occasions. And then eventually to, to actually raise up a classroom teacher who would teach a live class that would be part of the Bible College curriculum. And uh, so some of the home study students could actually have the live class right there. Okay, learn as much as you can about Guadalupe Bible College. Then learn how to present the college simply, clearly, and enthusiastically. Three, refer potential students to us. Now that's really critical because until you get some students, the rest of this isn't going to make a lot of sense. Four, get a home study teacher or more. Five, get a classroom teacher. Six, do an annual regional seminar. Now as we said before, you have to learn in the context of Christian community, at least somewhat. You can do home study, but that can't be the only way you learn. Now, we tell people to come to Cincinnati because that's where we have seminars uh, set up. But, but uh, they wouldn't have to come to Cincinnati. That's not the point. The point is to get that community context. Well, once you've got some students in your area, you know, you've got to have some students in your area, even though we'd open that seminar up to everybody, uh, we'd expect the students in the area to be the main people coming. So you get some students and you get uh, some home study teachers and you get a classroom teacher or two. Then you can get a regional seminar. Maybe every year at this time people can come to, come to that instead of coming to Cincinnati or in addition to coming to Cincinnati. And, and then basically just keep on adding students, home study teachers, classroom teachers, administrators. And um, you know you can say, well, uh, we spent a year and we ended up getting about 10 students. And then there was a couple people who became home study teachers in our area. They went to Cincinnati and got trained for that. And another one, you know, learned it just by mail. And uh, so we got these uh, two and then another one, three home study teachers. 
And uh, then uh, two years down the road, one of those teachers decided to do an actual class there. By that time, we had about 20 students in our area, and about 15 of them came to class. We opened it up to everybody, and about 10 more people came. So we had a class of about 25 that, met, that, uh, that meets every Thursday night during the first semester, second semester. Incidentally, the semesters go from the beginning of September to the end of November, ending a little bit before Thanksgiving, and then uh, the beginning of February, and then going into the beginning of April, uh, excuse me, the beginning of May. So there are approximately three month uh, semesters. And then there's summer program, we, do, we have uh, special programs and not just weekly classes. Um, so, uh, so, so you start getting a uh, classroom teaching you 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 use a parish parish classroom or a parish hall or even a home and you pick up two or three of those you have a regional thing well here you 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 have a branch of the Bible college you just keep adding students teachers administrators boy you can start you're going to be used that whole situation is going to raise up leaders, raise up leaders of community, bring co-workers uh, to, into uh, working with you in forming a branch of presentation ministries, really equipping people to do that job. You'll be able to get the Word of God out in all kinds of ways. It'll, it'll, it'll just really bring it together and have it eventually explode. Well, we're running out of time. Father, we pray that we would just do whatever you want us to do. May we have a heart for all to be saved and all to grow in holiness and all to minister in the full power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your voice in song to the Mighty One. Lift up your hands in praise. Fall on your knees at the throne of the Holy One. Offer yourself to the Ancient of Days. He is the light that shines in the darkness. He is the rock that stands. Glory and honor and power be unto the Lamb. Lift up your voice in song to the Mighty One. Lift up your hands in praise. Fall on your knees at the throne of the Holy One. Offer yourself to the Ancient of Days.